Now, we can give androgens multiple different routes. Look at these. We've got oral, by mouth, IM, as an injection, an intramuscular injection. Yeah, people usually aren't really a big fan of that. We can give it mucal, we can give it sub-Q, or we can give it transdermal. Now, the sub-Q are these implantable pellets, so you can just give that one time, they kind of hang out in there. Transdermal can be given as a gel, a patch, or a topical solution. But I want you to pay attention to that last dose there. Transdermal has an exclamation point by it because we want you to keep in mind that when you take androgens by gel, patch, or topical solution, you risk exposing other people to androgens, if it's on your clothing, if it's on your skin. So you want to be very careful about not exposing other people to androgens. So the risks of androgens include like these male physical characteristics, we call that virilization. Most females don't want those male characteristics. That's one of the risks. You can also prematurely close their growth plate or their epiphyseal plate. They have liver toxicity, hepatotoxicity, remember H-E-P-A-T, hepat, we're thinking of liver, and then toxicity tells us it is bad for the liver. Um, it also messes with your salt and water retention. You end up with extra edema, and it can make prostate cancer worse. Now, that's just a checklist, right? And those are really hard to remember. So let's walk through each one of these to help them stick in your brain better. Okay, when we talk about virilization, that's the first one. With women, there isn't anything on that list that I want. Look, acne, increased facial and body hair, and increased interest in sex. Well, I don't want any more facial hair than I have, right? So that's usually not something women are interested in. It might be irreversible, and you might also develop male pattern baldness. Okay, so stop and picture this for a minute. If you're a girl, you're growing hair here, and you're losing hair here. Again, not something we're usually looking for. It also affects other sex organs. They have clitoral enlargement and they get a deeper voice. Okay, this would be really hard to write like an online dating service for, right? Here, I've got acne, I have a low voice, I'm balding, and I have a beard. These would not be things I'd be looking for to make me more attractive. Now, girls, you're gonna see growth of pubic hair and they're also gonna see the clitoral enlargement. And if you see any of these signs, you need to discontinue the treatment immediately because these are likely irreversible, just like they would be with women. So be very careful with this. If you know some girls having these experiences, you're seeing these changes in their bodies, the treatment needs to absolutely stop. Remember, if a little girl is accidentally exposed to these, maybe they have a brother who's receiving the treatment, and you notice these things happening, you need to figure out how they're getting that androgen transferred to them. Now with boys, they're gonna see the regular changes that they would see in puberty. They'll have an increase in pubic hair, their penile enlargement, they'll have increased erections, and possibly even persistent erections. That's what you're gonna see in a boy's body. So testosterone is a hormone that can cause significant changes in the bodies of women, girls, and boys. Now let's go back to that premature growth plate closure. Now look at the graphic we made for you here. You see the blue points on the top and the bottom. That's the epiphyseal plate. It's also known as the growth plate. So go ahead and write growth plate right on top of that epiphyseal plate. That's just the same name that we use for that. It's located at each end of the long bones, and it plays a big role in how tall you grow. It's an area of growing tissue in children and adolescents, so that's part of your bones where it gets longer and longer and longer. Now, that's where we determine the length and the shape of a mature bone, so it tells how tall I'm going to be. Now, androgens put you at risk for a premature. That means it's too early. That growth plate closes off early. So why is that a problem? Well, because remember, it's the growth plate that determines the length and shape of a mature bone. So normally what happens in puberty is that cartilage growth slows down and it stops at the end of adolescence. Normally when those remember, the testosterone level is peaking. So then it calcifies. After it calcifies, usually around age 16 to 21, there's no further growth. So the bone will not get longer and the child will not get taller. That's it, game over. When the growth plate closes, you are done. So things that can happen to that growth plate, maybe they have a break in the growth plate, they have an injury, 
or premature closure will end up in the child being shorter. Okay, so what puts a kid at risk for this could be androgens, injury, and both of these could cause a premature closing of that bone, which means they won't be as tall as they were normally intended to be. So look at the difference in those bones there. See how they look at adolescence? See how the blue area, it's all calcified? It's not changeable now. The epiphyseal plate, when it's still growing, that growth plate is still moving and getting bigger, is where you see the larger blue shaded areas. Now let's look at the third possible adverse effect of androgens or testosterone specifically. So it's hepatotoxicity. Now we always try to break words down and help you remember those. Toxicity is definitely bad, right? And hepat refers to your liver. So this is hepatotoxic. Now it's certain form of androgens or testosterone. Now I've got it there, 17 alpha alkylated, right? That's just to let you know it's only specific androgen testosterone hormones that cause this effect. It's a cholestatic hepatitis. Now, itis means inflammation. Just underline I-T-I-S and write inflammation under that. We can help you learn some medical terminology as we go through this. But this means cholestatic hepatitis because that isn't flowing anymore. The bile isn't flowing. It's just like if you had a gallstone in the bile duct. The bile doesn't flow well, and that's why you end up with inflammation of the liver. See, the liver makes the bile, and it's meant to flow down that common bile duct into the small intestine. If it can't flow down through there, it's gonna start irritating that liver because it backs up. That's what cholestatic, meaning still, hepatitis is. So you wanna make sure that you're kind of monitoring liver function text on a periodically on a pretty regular basis. So watch how their liver is doing because we know that especially with this 17 alpha alkylated androgen or testosterone, they can have some hepatotoxicity. Also another risk, it might increase LDL and decrease HDL. Now that's a bad deal because remember, LDL is the bad cholesterol and HDL is the good cholesterol. So you'd want it the opposite, but people on androgens or testosterone have an increased risk of their LDL levels shooting up and their HDL levels going down. Another possible adverse effect for taking an androgen like testosterone is that androgens promote sodium and water retention. Well, that kind of goes without saying. If you promote anything that causes your body to hang on to sodium, water is gonna follow. So once you hang on to sodium, you're gonna have an increased water retention. So I'm gonna have lots of extra fluid on board. So you wanna watch closely if the patient has any cardiovascular problems. If they're already kind of walking that balance of fluid volume overload, this could be something that could cause further fluid volume overload. So remember, androgens like testosterone promote sodium retention. They're gonna have more water and more volume. So watch your patients closely for signs of overload. Now, prostate cancer isn't caused by testosterone, but it can make it worse. So it's really important that you educate your patients about this risk. Also, you wanna make sure that they might have undiagnosed prostate cancer, so you'll want to screen them before you start this therapy. So just to be clear, testosterone, an androgen like testosterone, does not cause prostate cancer, but if they have prostate cancer, they may not even be aware of it, it will make it worse. So you definitely wanna make sure that they have screening before they start this therapy. Now, androgen should not be used with pregnant women, with obvious with men with prostate cancer that we just talked about, or breast cancer, because remember that men can also have breast cancer. And you shouldn't use androgens like testosterone for athletic performance enhancement. Let's go back over those categories. Not for pregnant women, because it's gonna cause some significant changes to the fetus, particularly a female fetus. Men with prostate or breast cancer, or for athletic performance enhancement. The risks far outweigh the benefits of the improvement in performance enhancement. Okay, I really wanna go back and emphasize the risks of accidental exposure. Now you know that we can use transdermal methods of getting androgens or testosterone gel. You put it on your skin, but if it brushes up against clothing or another individual, you could accidentally expose them to testosterone. So be very careful about handling the clothes of patients who use androgen gels and also touching patients who have this gel. You don't want to accidentally expose them to virilization and all the other things that could happen from testosterone.
Now, hypogonadism is the only FDA-approved therapeutic use of androgen therapy. So I want you to underline that. Hypogonadism is the only FDA approved. We talked about some off-label uses, but this is the only one approved by the FDA. So that means they have low or absent secretion of testosterone from the testes. So for now, this is only approved by the FDA in males who have low or absent secretion of testosterone from their gonads.